Good morning, everyone, and happy Monday. Actually, good evening, because um, we are including everyone, but specifically our South African audience today. Um, thank you so much to everyone joining. Um, I see you guys. Uh, just while everyone's busy joining, I just want to give a brief background on the purpose for this live. First of all, I think it's, you know, it's, it's such a sad topic to speak about. And I am so agitated that in the year 2020, this is still a conversation that we need to have as South Africans. I have decided to partner with First for Women in South Africa um, to host this live and to host this workshop because this really is a workshop. I have a special guest joining me today, Aisha uh, Baker. Um, she's going to join me in a couple of minutes. But before that, I also I just want to give you guys a good overview. I've done a pre-recording with Dr. Anthony Hofer from Cobra Defense in South Africa, and I'm going to be posting that to my IGTV uh, Unbreakable series after this live. So please go and check it out. We have done a whole 30 plus minute um, self-defense workshop that is um, nothing that that you can't learn, nothing that is not applicable to, to pretty much anyone in an unwanted, difficult situation. I partnered with First for Women um, because I feel like, or I know that in South Africa, we have a very, very big problem. Um, just to read a couple of stats for you guys, South Africa has one of the highest femicide rates in the world. Um, according to the South African Police Service, more than 2,700 women were killed in 2019. The most recent data indicate, and listen to this, that a woman is murdered every three hours in South Africa. Uh, I listened to President Ramaphosa speak the other day, and he admitted that over 51% of women in South Africa have experienced violence at the hands of their partners. And this one even blows my mind further. Out of 183 countries listed by the World Health Organization in 2016, South Africa had the fourth highest female interpersonal violence rate in the world. Now, guys, that is just something that um, is not acceptable to me. I know that it's just not been accepted, acceptable to women all over South Africa. And you know what? If I can be a part of this conversation, I'm going to find a way to be a part of this conversation. And I'm going to try and find a way to be part of the change um, that we as South African want, women want to see uh, in South Africa. Even though I'm based in the, in the US, um, my heart is still very much with South Africa and um, I love my country and I want to see the best for my country. And right now, that is not a great reality that we as South African women are facing. I launched my Unbreakable platform um, back in 2017 after I was hijacked and held at gunpoint by five armed men. And that is one of the reasons why I am so passionate about femicide, about gender-based violence, and about bringing change. Um, I'm no expert in this field, but I know that I have a platform and I want to be able to use this platform um, to empower women, not just in South Africa, but across the globe, to seek help and to seek healing by connecting them with a safe and supportive community. And I hope that my Unbreakable platform can become a global community of hope, empowerment and support to, to women that feel vulnerable. I hope to use this platform to enable women, um, like I said, to seek and accept the opportunity to heal physically, mentally and emotionally by connecting them with specialists and experts and organizations um, you know, who have dedicated their careers and their lives into helping women. That is one of the reasons why I have decided to partner with First for Women today. I feel that First for Women, um, you know, their values and their morals and what they stand for and what they fight for, uh, specifically for women that have been affected by abuse in South Africa, aligns so directly with Unbreakable. Um, I don't want to go too much into my background. I just, I think the only thing that really matters is that um, 
that I am very passionate about this topic. And I think you guys can tell from my six week Unbreakable series that I did a little bit earlier this year. Um, I relaunched my Unbreakable platform that I started in, in 19 and um, I hope that you guys will be able to find value in this conversation today. Before I introduce, um, did the Wi-Fi just go out? I think we're still good. Um, before I introduce Aisha to you guys, I just want to give you guys a little bit of background on what First for Women does, because I think it's really remarkable. First for Women started their foundation in 2005, and they've been fighting um, gender-based violence and um, specifically women abuse causes uh, in South Africa since then. Uh, I mean, they've been able to raise over 70 million rand for women abuse causes. Um, they've been able to make a tangible and sustainable difference in the lives of over 90,000 women, which I think is so awesome. Um, and the difference is just, uh, you know, a testament to collective power of of women. Um, so I think that's so cool. And then uh, First of Women also started their For Women platform. And this is something that each one of you guys can be a part of. You can go onto their web website, um, sign up to become part of the For Women platform. And what that is, is an online platform that aims to consolidate uh, women abuse fighting efforts specifically in South Africa in one place because I feel like there's so many, um, you know, centers and uh, organizations that fight women abuse. So what four women does is they consolidate all of that onto one platform. Um, and then first of all, women also have their one move, one movement campaign that they launched um, a couple of years ago. This is a movement that empowers women to achieve their potential um, in every sphere of social uh, and productive life by eradicating fear of crime. Uh, this movement aims at partnering with self-defense experts who teach women basic skills on how to handle life-threatening situations. And that's exactly what we're doing today. I've partnered with First for Women and with Cobra Defense um, in, in Johannesburg, where we will be posting our self-defense workshop later on on my IGTV um, under my Unbreakable series. So please go and check that out. I really think that you guys will find so many helpful pieces of information. Um, with no further ado, I'd love to introduce um, Aisha Baker to you guys. She is Aisha, and let me see if I can connect with you. I know Instagram can sometimes be a little bit finicky. Here she is, I got you. Here we go. Aisha was born in Cape Town, South Africa. 29-year-old award-winning influencer, businesswoman, style icon, uh, mother, um, and this girl is definitely making a mark. Aisha, I know that I have drawn so much inspiration from you um, as a South African woman. You have such a strong voice in South Africa, and that's one of the reasons that I'm so excited to have you on this live today and just to pick your brain a little bit on, on this topic. I also want to add that um, Aisha was nominated as Nickelodeon's favorite African blogger um, at the Nickelodeon's Kids' Choice Awards in 2016, and she also received Glamour's, um, South Africa's Most Glamorous Woman of the Year Award in the same year. And recently, Aisha has been added to Forbes Africa, the 30 under 30 list, which is awesome. Congratulations, Aisha. Thank you so much um, for joining. Um, I'm so excited about this, and you look beautiful as always. Thanks, Sims. Um, I think I'm having a network issue. Can you see me fine? I can see you perfectly and I can hear you perfectly. How about you? Okay, now I'm, I don't know what's going on with my network. Um, for having me, Demi. Uh, um, you said you could see me fine, right? I can Just see thumbs you. Thumbs up if you can see I me. can see you. I okay, can hear cool. you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Aisha, um, thank you so much. Do you want to try reconnect? Are you good to go? No, there we're good. We're settled. There we we're go. settled. Awesome. Okay, awesome. Perfect. Um, Aisha, I want to start off by just, you know, just asking you, what does it mean to you to be a South African woman, especially in this day and age? Yeah, you know, um, James, I'm sure you remember, but being a South African woman is quite an intense experience. Um, you know, we're not only trying to be mothers and wives and daughters, partners, um, lovers, friends. Uh, we're also trying to, you know, strive hard for our education. And, um, 
that's quite a deep rooted thing for us as South African women because education means we can uplift our communities. Um, so there's a huge responsibility on the shoulders of women here in South Africa to to foster change and to make changes, especially in the context of, of gender based violence and femicide. Um, but in all spheres of our lives, I think there's a there's a sense of having to carry our society um, mm -hmm. to propel our society forward. Um, and on the you know the positive side, there's a huge sense of camaraderie amongst women. You know, knowing that we're stronger together and when we combine our strengths, we can we can make changes. Um, similarly to what we're doing here today, where we, we're joining each other and, and really trying to propel change forward. Um, I couldn't agree with you more, Aisha. I think we've seen over and over that um, I think South Africa has such a, such a beautiful culture among not just women, but among a lot of people where we really do take hands and stand together and stand up for what we um, you know, we believe is right. And I think that there's still so much work that needs to be done. But I, I personally believe that, you know, us standing together, just looking at last year, the, the riots that um, a, 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 like arose after, you know, a, a specific lady was murdered in a post office yeah. and how the whole country, not just women, but men stood together and said, enough is enough. This cannot go on this way. Um, and I know you were part of that. I was in New York at the time and I, I remember feeling just like I, I have never wanted to be in South Africa as bad as that time um, yeah. to be able to. And it was such an emotional that. day for all of us. Yeah. Um, I've got a, a crowd phobia actually. So I can't um, I like I, I panic if I'm at concerts or sporting matches. So it was really difficult for me to be there that day. Um, but I felt like it was important to be there and, and just to stand among people, you know, that I know and people in my community they were just all banded together with the same goal in mind. Um, and we still have that goal here in South Africa. You know, we, it's still top of mind for us, even with, um, you know, everything crazy going on in the world. It's top of mind that gender-based violence and femicide is a huge issue. I mean, you, you relayed the stats earlier. It's absolutely crazy. So we're really, really pushing for change, yeah. Um, unfortunately, like you said, and like I mentioned earlier, the facts are so clear that femicide in South Africa is just, it's just not um, a, a secret anymore. Um, it's a big reality. And I feel that even women that have not directly been affected by violence in South Africa or by gender-based violence still carry the effects of those women that have been affected yeah. by gender-based violence because fear being instilled into our lives. And, yeah. you know, prior to my, my hijack a couple of years ago, there was a reason I attended self-defense courses. There was a reason I attended safety driving courses. There was a reason every time I stop at a traffic light, a robot, as we you call nervous. it in South Africa, yeah. you're nervous and you check your windows and you check your mirrors. And, you know, there's a reason for that. Um, you know, can you talk a little bit on that? Do you agree with yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, there's a huge, or what you're speaking about now, it, it still exists today. There's a huge level of anxiety amongst women. Um, it's hard to imagine, I think, if you're not from South Africa, how that feels. It's a constant feeling of fear for your own safety. Um, and that fear is, you know, whether you're going to the supermarket, whether you're going down the street um, to take out your trash, whether you um taking your kids to school, um, or the post office, um, for some people, unfortunately, and so sadly, it's in their own homes. Um, they're not safe in their, in, in their homes at all. And, and, you know, when I say some people, it's a lot of people. You spoke about the stats of partners, um, you know, committing femicide, but there's also partners who are abusing their, their women every single day and children as well. So there's this constant anxiety and undercurrent of anxiety um, but what that means, I think, for all of us is that we've, well, like you said, enough is enough. We've had enough of feeling anxious and feeling unsafe, like something has to change. And um, which is why the, the organizations that, um, that are helping with, with those changes. And one of the ones that I work with is Rape Crisis in Cape Town. And organizations like Rape Crisis are really holding government accountable and saying, you know, you've made promise, promises to us in 2019 let's see where you are at now let's um you know we want to know we how far we are at helping the criminal justice system not only giving um survivors the justice that they require but also helping us 
overall to feel safer. Um, there's almost a collective trauma, which is what you spoke about earlier. Um, and that, that collective trauma is, is a hard one. Um, when, you know, anyone passes in South Africa now, it's, it's commonly known the news is spread quickly. Um, and women feel it. Um, and men feel it too. We feel the anxiety of, you know, our women are not safe. Um, it's not safe to go to the grocery store anymore. It's not safe to park in the, in the parking lot and put your shopping bags in the boot. Um, what do you call it in America? The trunk. The trunk. Um, yeah. Yeah, they don't <laughs> so know what the boot is. They're like, yeah. oh, what boots? What boots? <laughs> <laughs> so to put your groceries in the trunk is in the it's trunk. like, it's an anxious experience. Yes. Um, I, I think the reason why I feel like this question is so important is because um, I listened to a, a, a Instagram TV video that somebody posted, a South African posted the other day. And um, this guy was speaking about how complacent us as South Africans have become on certain topics. Load shedding. It, it, it just is what it is. It we is just accept it. Is, yeah. it. Uh, you know, the puddles in the street, like it just is what it is. We just accept it. And we, we have such a great spirit that we just, I think, tend to kind of make a joke about it and just, yeah. but it's things that are not okay. The violence rate, the crime rate in South Africa, it's things that are not okay. And I think the reason why this conversation is so important is to let people know that it's not okay. Yeah. It's not acceptable. We do yeah. need to have, um, you know, hold authorities accountable um, to make the changes, to serve us as South African women. Um, yeah. So... I remember when, when Tim came to, to South Africa for the first time, you know, I had to tell him, no, you know, we have to pull into the gate, close the gate, pull into the garage, close the garage, mm -hmm. and then you can unlock your doors. And yeah. he was like, what? And, you know, for me living in America and not having a six foot fence with electrical fencing and barbed wire around my house is still something I get used to every day because that's yeah. something that's been so installed in me and you know you don't always realize how abnormal things are until you see a different thing you leave of. yeah I think also Demi um I don't know if this happened to you but when you first move um to a different country and we where things like this are not going on it's you still have that inside of you you still walk around with the fear that someone might just snatch you um I don't know about you, but I'm, I think you are quite small um, when I last saw you. Um, I'm tiny. I'm like short. So I have this fear of when I'm walking in the street that someone might just throw me over their shoulder and walk away with me. Um, and it sounds crazy to someone who's not from here, but it's the real, real fear that we have as women. And, and I think, you know, there's a twofold scenario where, yes, we have to hold authorities accountable, but we also have the responsibility in our own homes. And like you had the conversation with Tim, we have to have those conversations with our husbands, with our boyfriends, um, with our brothers and our fathers. And then also there's a responsibility, I think, when we're raising kids to sort of end the culture of gender-based violence and femicide, because it's a cultural uh, sort of epidemic in our society where it's just happening and, and we feel like there's nothing we can do about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to say that there is something we can do about it. And having these conversations is doing something. Yes. Um, and, you know, through having conversations like this, we are not only educating people around the world who may be able to help us, but also holding our governments accountable, holding the police accountable, um, making it easier for survivors and victims to report cases. Um, and also to get justice, which is one of the biggest things that's, um, you know, on the top of the ticket for most of the the organizations working against gender-based violence and femicide. Um, I part of Rape Crisis, I get some of the um, the annual general meeting notes, and um, it's really one of the things that they that's top of their list is just correcting the criminal justice system. Um, so one of those things is creating a specialized courts for um, gender-based violence, where um, you know, everyone in the court is dealing with the issue with more sensitivity um, and allowing for uh, um, survivors to feel supported in court. Because mm -hmm. um, imagine you've been, um, I mean, you don't have to imagine it's happened to you. Um, yeah. You've been, you know, experienced violence. Um, you, you don't want to relive that trauma again. And you have to when you go and report. So there's a case of like, 
it's not as easy because people say, oh, well, why don't you go to the police? But for a lot of um, survivors, going to the police is rehatching the story and re-traumatizing themselves. For sure. Um, so creating that support structure. And, and I like what you said about Unbreakable, um, empowering women and supporting women and creating that structure where women can support each other, but yeah. also seek support from the community where it's like, let me go with this person and you know, help them to report their case and be there to hold their hand in court. Yes. Um, Rape Crisis Cape Town is one of the organizations that's doing, they're doing that. They're going with women to court when they report um, and helping to support them through their cases. Um, one of the things that, uh, that First for Women do, they have their First for Women Foundation, and I, I explained this a little bit earlier, but they have their For Women platform. And I think it's so cool They what that, that platform does. It basically consolidates um, various uh, women abuse, uh, you know, fighting causes into one platform. Um, so people can go and join that platform any woman can come, can go and be a voice. Um, if you need help, you can draw from that platform. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of people don't really know how to get involved, but, yeah. um, you know, I'll be putting up links into my stories. Um, so I would really just encourage everyone of you guys uh, joining today to go and just go and read up a little bit more about yeah. that. See how you can join various platforms, see how you can join various organizations that do great work. Um, so that's just also something that I think it's 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 really cool, and I, I think um, giving that support is so important because I also think in South Africa a lot of our trust has been have been broken with yeah. authorities, um, yeah. which is another very sad topic to to touch on. But um, that's a, a discussion for another day. Yeah. Um, the fact that COVID nineteen just worsened gender-based violence across the globe is also not a secret and um i think what's really sad is that there's not a lot of people are being caught right now because of lockdowns because of restrictions um but that doesn't lessen the fact that women are caught with their abusers in their homes um and you know i know this is such a complex issue but um i also think that even though you know, it's hard for women to reach out for help right now. I think that's also why this conversation is so important to let people know that anyone that feel vulnerable, that there are organizations that want to help that, you know, and, and I think, I hope that this conversation instills just a little spark in a neighbor or a friend or yeah. you know, just to reach out, to ask that question, just to check in with your friend. Um, yeah. You know, I think, sometimes it's so important to follow your gut feeling and I, I, I'd rather look stupid or seem too sensitive than not to care at all. Yeah. And I think, you know, James, just to add to that, um, it's so important for us as individuals, everyone um, to speak out against this, um, to raise our voices because by raising our voice, we are creating a pathway for someone who may need help. Um, there may be someone out there who didn't know about, um, you know, the First for Women platform, who didn't know about the rape crisis, who didn't know there are organizations out there that can help them. They can help them get out of situations that are detrimental to them, um, that you could save a life, you know. So um, I think just to everyone who's listening and watching this, um, like Demi said, you know, check on that neighbor, check on that friend that you're worried about, that something seems off, you know, inquire and ask. Um, and also allow that person the space to ask you for help and if you can't provide that help you can definitely provide the resource um and i'm sure you'll post the link later um with the organizations um and you know a lot of people will say you know posting on social media what does that do it actually does quite a bit um it's raising our voices and reaching everyone should do this you know post something on social media that that makes your voice amplified that amplifies the cause and um slowly together little bits of of um change and and fighting for the right thing will result i believe will result in us actually making a physical change um and also putting that pressure like i said on government yes. um to make it safer for us i mean i would love for you to come back to south africa for a visit and just feel like you can go for a walk or see your husband and um, and feel calm, you know, because we all want that. We all want to walk in the street and just feel calm and just do our shopping and live our lives. 
Exactly. That's that's very much what I hope and pray for South Africa. Um, you know, that's something that I, I hope we can see in our lifetime. I know you have the cutest um, little mini knees. And, <laughs> yes, you so know, cute. as a mother, I'm pretty sure that is what you would want to see for yeah. your children, Aisha. And I know that there's so many other mothers that feel the same way. And just to speak on you know, yes, a hashtag, a hashtag, what does that really do? And I agree, there has, action has to be taken. But uh, social media um, gives us the opportunity to start a conversation. Yeah. And I feel like starting that conversation gives us the confidence to ha keep authorities responsible, um, to follow up, to actually care. And, yeah. um, you know, if it wasn't for social media and if it wasn't for one person starting to speak up and it's just snowballing, um, you know, I don't think the effect would have been that big. Look at the Me Too movement, you know, yes. action have been taken and that yes. conversation is still going on and people are being held accountable. And um, I hope to see the same in South Africa for sure. I hope so too. And I, and I hope that this conversation between you and I encourages people as well. It may have felt you know, a bit off, you know, should I post, shouldn't I post, do I add my voice to this conversation? Yes. I think like the fact that Dems and I are on this call together, you know, shows that, you know, you guys can get involved in the convo and, and move the needle forward, whether it's just like a little millimeter, every little bit counts. Yes. And it's important for us to, to keep doing that. So I'm sure when you post the links, you're going to have lots of people finally having the resources they need to, to get involved as well. I hope so. Aisha, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? I think, um, yeah, I just once you post your links, I think that will be awesome. And then I'm sure Rape Crisis Cape Town is on there. It's a course that I'm really passionate about. If anyone wants to, you know, get involved or just find out more or needs any support from them, um, you can catch, you can get them on Instagram at um, Rape Crisis Cape Town. Um, they can also link you up to other organizations in other cities that you may need. Um, and then also just everyone, please be kind and just take care of each other. I love that. Thank you, Aisha. And thank you so thank much you. for being such a, just such a beautiful and bright light mm -hmm. in so many people's lives. And, um, you know, we, we don't even know each other that well personally, but I love yeah. following you on Instagram and on social media. And I just love following all the beautiful work that you always do. And um, mm -hmm. just thank, thank you. you for just spreading so much kindness and, um, and hope in so many people's lives. So thanks, thanks for joining It really means today. a lot. <laughs> thanks, Aisha. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Um, so just as Aisha's logging off there. Um, before I log off, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of background. So the self-defense workshop that I'm about to post on my uh, IGTV, Unbreakable, what do you call it? Um, whatever, the Unbreakable link on my IGTV. You'll find it. Um, I'm about to post that just after this live. I did the self-defense workshop with Dr. Anthony Hofer, who was, who's a trained and accredited self-defense instructor at Cobra Defense, and he's also the owner of Family uh, Self-Defense Academy in Johannesburg. Um, Dr. Hofer was a non-commissioned officer so, uh, sergeant for 12 years in the military, and he's been a karate sensei third Dan Black Belt for 25 years now. I don't know about you guys, but I actually had to go and Google that. I don't know what a Dan Black Belt was. I thought it was a typo, but <laughs> apparently a third Dan Black Belt is pretty much as good as it gets in karate. So, um, and last but not least, Dr. Hofer has his PhD in metaphysics. So, you know, I just thought he is such a reliable source to draw from and to learn from. And um, we had a conversation about uh, various different topics, such as if there's more than one attacker, what do you do in that situation? Is there one specific thing that you can do in a in that situation, um, in a, you know, in an unwanted situation, the importance of having confidence? Um, how do we foresee that fear causes us to freeze in a traumatic situation? knowledge and information can reduce fear um, and why so many women choose not to fight back. Um, and then he, he is also going to demonstrate um, a self-defense move that is learnable, teachable to pretty much anyone, um, whether attacker is actually from the front. And he's also going to demonstrate a couple of self-defense moves um, 
if an attacker attacks you from the back. So I think we had such an interesting conversation and I really hope you guys go and, go and check that out and, and tell your friends, tell your family, watch it with your sisters, watch it with your friends, watch it with your mom um, and please share it. Um, I think it's something that a lot of people can just pull a lot of information from. And I, once again, I'm so sad that this is a conversation that we have to have in the year 2020. I, I really hope and pray that this is something that we can see come to an end in our lifetime. Um, and I'm pretty sure all South African women would agree with me. Um, just before I log off, just to recap, um, you guys can go and join First for Women's um, foundation uh by joining by logging onto their website all the information's down there um you can join the four women platform that's also all the information's also on their website and you can become a supporter and a voice for women affected by gender-based violence in south africa by donating to the first for women foundation um you can keep following first for women's one move one movement um, to continue educating and equipping yourself with skills and knowledge um, to protect yourself. So just like the workshop that I'm about to post, um, First of Women uh, hosts um, a lot of self-defense workshops um, for women in South Africa. So follow that one move, one movement um, to continue equipping yourself. And then lastly, invite a friend, a sister, a family member to do the same um, because I really believe that together we can we can really become stronger and together we can um, hold those accountable, um, those, you know, officials that need to be held accountable. We can help uh, hold them accountable. What's wrong with my English right now? I'm, like maybe I'm just speaking too much. <laughs> um, you guys, thank you so much for joining. I really, really appreciate it. Um, that video is going to be up shortly so please go and check it out thank you so much to everyone joining i i really hope you guys enjoyed this conversation um and i hope that we can do this again sometime soon bye